Welcome to my sewing room. The name of this show is The Baby Show, but actually I thought it probably ought to be named The Ultimate Grandmother Show. We have the world's most beautiful items for the newborn baby for you to make today. This bassinet I think is the most beautiful bassinet I've ever seen. It's hand smocked and I'm just going to show you the details and later on I'm going to teach you how to make it. It starts with the little circles and by the way you can make this as high in your room as you want to. You can put it all the way to the ceiling or not so high. It has circles, it has circles and ruffles and look at these wonderful ribbons just all kinds of old pink and green and yellow and that pretty much takes care of either sex I think. These are called mosquito nets and I hopefully you don't have any mosquitoes in your house but it actually is just a really nice uh, protection for the bassinet. Let me pull them back a little bit and you can see what I think is the world's most beautiful bassinet. This is hand smocked. It is made out of netting and silk dupioni, beautiful, beautiful ribbon rosette, a large ribbon rosette, and the bassinet is not all. We have for you a little baby pillow to go in this bassinet. I'll tuck that right in there. A beautiful sheet, a matching sheet with this magnificent close uh, trim right here. See with the uh, robin's egg blue ribbon running through the trim, that's a matching sheet which you make yourself. And of course, we have a magnificent baby blanket with lace around the edge and a beautiful shadow work embroidery by hand design in the middle. And I think we also need a diaper uh, cover uh, holder. I think it's really a diaper holder, not a diaper cover holder, but a diaper holder that's made to match the bassinet. Now, come along with me and I'll begin to share the techniques on how to make these beautiful baby items. Let's begin with this beautiful netting crown that goes over the bassinet. Actually, a long time ago, these were called mosquito nets, but hopefully you won't have any mosquitoes in your house. Let's look up at the top. First of all, I have a wonderful bow tied, and then there's a circle with two ruffles trimmed with uh, lace. Now, here is the size circle that you purchase at your craft store for the little one. And moving on down, you can see this is a bigger circle with lots of bows and the cutest little ruffles you've ever seen. Let me hold that out so you can see that adorable little ruffle. It kind of is a little curved ruffle. And those two rings are what you have to buy in order to make this wonderful crown. Now then, the mosquito netting part is made in panels about, oh, what is it, three quarters of a yard wide. So you can put them anywhere you want to put them. Now let me move these panels back and show you the magnificent work on this bassinet. Right over here, you can see it has silk ribbon embroidery, stitches with a bow, and let me just give you a little quick peek underneath here. These, uh, this is a tufted uh, white silk dupioni underneath this bassinet hood, and then as you can see earlier, it has netting over the silk dupioni. Let me share with you how that is done. This pretend, I've got a piece of cardboard here, but pretend that is the actual hood of your bassinet, not a piece of cardboard. You go in and measure and see how, how big you're going to need in the way of a piece of silk dupioni. Then I cut the silk dupioni that will fit inside. Now pretend like this is my bassinet hood. I surge around the edges and see that'll fit just beautifully when I go in there to stitch it down. So that fits the inside of the hood. Now let me show you what's happening underneath here. After you pull it on the inside of the hood, go ahead and just stitch by hand, kind of lace it up after you put a little bit of quilt batting down for padding. Now then, the Believe it or not, it is tufted all the way through the hood. So you'll have to carefully weave your needle in there, come in and sew the button, so it really will be tufted like upholstery. Then you put your covering on there and gather your ruffle around, and all of this is stitched by hand. How do you do this hand smock? Let's go on down and look at this, as a matter of fact. Right here is what I think is the most beautiful bassinet cover I've ever seen. This is hand smocking, about six, five rows of hand smocking. This is the most beautiful ribbon rosette. Coming down to the first row of netting, which has uh, a polyester ribbon just stitched down with a double needle. And then let's move on down the skirt. 
and you can see the second row of netting has the ribbon stitched down with a double needle and then underneath these two rows of netting is your silk dupioni. Now then, here is the piece as I have run it through the smocking machine, the pleater, and now it is ready to pleat. As you can see, it's, it's three layers. One row of netting, the second row of netting, and then the silk dupioni, which makes the actual skirt. You fold down the tops of all of these before you run it through the pleater. You do use quilting thread, and when you smock it, let's look at this beautiful smocking again, do use, uh, see the rows right here? Do use four rows of, of, I mean, excuse me, four strands of embroidery floss rather than the three, because this is a pretty thick layer. Now let's talk about lining this bassinet. Actually, I could kind of hold it over for you just a minute here so you can see the pleats right around this area. It isn't stitched down except on the edge. These are just folded in, these pleats are. Now then, let me show you how you, you see those pleats that are folded in right there? Here's how that is done. You'll just lay your fabric, this is broadcloth, inside this bassinet until it fits. Just kind of hold it. You're going to need a friend to do this one, I guarantee you. Then you're going to fold in these pleats. Let me see if I can pull it up here. You're going to fold in the pleats and pin them. All right, let me hold it over here once again. You see, you'll come in here. As soon as you get the area fixed and kind of make it fit the bassinet, you're going to come in here and pin them and make sure that it will go all the way over the edge down into the bottom. Then you're going to surge this piece right here all the way around the top edge, surging in those pleats, and then fold it over on the bassinet. Now you're not going to glue it to the bassinet because you're going to have to take this out to wash it. Speaking of washing it, and speaking of holding it in place, the mattress that comes with this bassinet is really lightweight. It's kind of flimsy. So you're going to need a little bit more weight on this mattress to hold it down. So we've used big washers that we glued to the bottom of this mattress. And no, it's not going to be uncomfortable on the baby. We've glued to the mattress so it will hold it down and hold it in place a little bit better. It really does work better that way. When you mash down on it, I promise you, you can't feel those washers. Now, the last thing I'd like to share with you is, let me pull this Velcro off. This is attached both to the smocked piece and to the piece that fits in the lining with Velcro. Now, this is important. I stitched the Velcro to this piece that lines the bassinet because that's going to have to be washed. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> this is not going to have to be washed, this beautiful piece here. So we glued it to the back of the smocking hopefully not to go through and machine stitch on the top of the smocking. It just works better that way. Another little trick on the smocking would be that we did not take out the gathering threads. We, we ran the gathering threads in quilting thread and white quilting thread so we didn't have to remove the gathering threads. It gives us just a little bit more strength to go around this beautiful baby bassinet. And now then I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and share with you some of the techniques on making the beautiful linens that go in this bed. Just wait until you see up close this beautiful baby blanket. The blanket has the shadow work embroidered. Now this is done by hand, but you could do shadow applique by machine. And this is done by hand, but you could use the wonderful embroidery stitches on your sewing machine. This is done on the Swiss Batiste, now this is absolutely beautiful, the way this is, the wide lace is on the edge and it's flat mitered there on, on the very edge, that beautiful wide lace. And this is lined with a wonderful flannel on the back. So this is really a warm baby blanket, although I think it's the prettiest one I've ever seen. Now then, we have next a baby sheet. And you know what? Babies need sheets in those bassinets. They need crib sheets too, and you can make it a little bit bigger, and it'll be a crib sheet. See how pretty this trim is? It is a triple entredeau or entredeau beading and has gathered lace on both sides, simply zigzag down. Now, how do you make that little sheet? It's very easy. This is made out of a broadcloth. You simply surge around the edges, fold it up to the front for your hem, Make this little entredeau beading and lace trim, put it down, zigzag it, and then turn it over two folds on the edge and you're ready, you're finished. Now, how do we make this little entredeau and lace trim? That's what I'm going to show you now. I've already done one side of it for you. 
Here is the uh, entredeau beading, and this gathered lace has already been stitched on. Now, what I have here is a seam allowance left on the entredeau. Let me trim that seam allowance off because I need just that raw edge with the entredeau uh, it kind of exposed there. I don't need the seam allowance on it. Now then, how? what is the easy way to attach gathered lace? Well, here we go. Underneath the foot of the sewing machine. I'll just put the presser foot down there to hold it just a minute. Now then, some of you already know that French and English laces have a gathering thread built right into them. So when you pull that gathering thread, it just pulls the lace up like that. But I'm not going to pull the lace there right yet. Let me show you what I am going to do. I'm going to lift this up, go ahead and put the flat lace underneath and make a little, I'll make a few just zigzags just to hold it, okay? I've just simply got a zigzag on my sewing machine. Now then, in order to gather this lace the easy way, I'm going to take a pin, come out here, slip it underneath the top one of those scallops or scallops, whichever way you pronounce it, that's on the top of the lace. I moved out about six inches and pulled that string. Now then, in order to push the gathers going toward the sewing machine, which is where I need those gathers, all right, I'm going to pull the edge of this loop that is closest to the sewing machine, so it will be this one right here. All right, I'm going to push those gathers in, and I'm going to use my wooden shish kebab stick available at the grocery store to push those gathers underneath. Now I'm going to, actually, I'm going to, um, lift this just a minute as so I can push these gathers underneath there just a little bit more. There we go. Lower it and zigzag. And what you're going to say is, well, Martha, hang on just a minute. Those gathers might not be real even if you do it like that. Guess what? It doesn't matter if it's even. Just enjoy it and sew it. And that is the easy way to attach gathered lace. Then when I need more, I'm going to put my needle in needle down position. I should have done that earlier. When I need more gathers, I just push them underneath kind of just push it underneath and I will zigzag some more and then I will be able to attach the lace to the entredeau and gather it all at the same time and it will be absolutely beautiful and that is a very, very easy technique. Now let me pull it out here and just kind of show you that, that attach the gathered lace as well as gathered it and that is the very easiest way to do that little trick. Okay, the last thing I have to share with you and I just love this too is the prettiest little baby pillow. Isn't that wonderful? Now let me turn it over so you can see that little entredeau beading and double gathered lace edging goes all the way around. There's one little trick to making this pillowcase I'd like to share with you. I made, in order to have everything finished, wait a minute, let me pull it back over here, all seams finished on the inside. There is not a single exposed seam. When you look on this, it's absolutely perfect. I made a little double band, okay. One piece of fabric folded this way. I made a little double band, put it on the inside of the pillowcase. And by the way, I did use French seams on this pillowcase. Put it on the inside and then I will surge all the way around there. And then when I turn it out, let me do this one, which but through the magic of television is already done. When I open it up, you see on that part, I do not see any exposed seams. It's just gonna be beautiful there. Then comes time to stitch down this uh, little band that I've already made. Remember how easy it was to make? You know, you can stitch it down with straight stitching, but somehow I think it's a little bit easier just to lay that whole band right on top of the little pillowcase and simply zigzag it down. Now, some people say it's easier to sew it straight. I think it's easier to zigzag it. And if you wanted to just to go ahead and glue it in place rather than, you know, rather than holding it or, or pinning it, you could just use a little bit of this liquid, uh, the liquid, pins here, this kind of a liquid glue that washes out, go underneath here and glue it down and that would make it even easier. And now I have a beautiful doll dress for you. We might just call this little pinafore the little lamb pinafore. My little doll loves her little pinafore. Since this is the baby show, we use a little lamb fabric took the little lamb design and put it on the front of the pinafore. Now, this is the sweetest little embroidery. French knots, and, and by the way, done by hand. French knots, satin stitch, stem stitch, 
Lazy Daisy, and the insides of a bullion rose. A little bit of ecru smocking, and then down to the bottom, the cutest little lace application technique I'm going to show you in just a minute. Let me hold her pinafore up for you so you can see this sweet little lamb fabric where we took the design for the embroidery straight off of her precious little fabric. Now, when you get ready to do your embroidery, you're going to need to embroider on a bigger piece of fabric, so draw off your pinafore top and maybe even a little bit bigger piece than this. Draw off your top and do your embroidery, which we've started here with the satin stitch and the little uh, French knots, before you cut out your pinafore top. Now the technique I wanted to share with you, there, actually there are two things I wanted to show you. Hang on. This is what smocking looks like when you run it through a pleater. Do you see those little stitches that look like you've just picked them up one by one, which is the way they used to do it? Now the way you turn those little threads, and this is a quilting thread, into pleats for smocking, you just simply pull those threads. Now you see it looks a little messy right in there now. All you do to make that mess disappear and just pull it up and I'm pulling in this direction. You just pull it and those little pleats will lay down in there just perfectly. And that's how you pleat with your smocking machine and then that's how you pull it to make it look perfect. All right, the technique on the bottom is one that I have called Martha's Magic for all the years I've been writing books and that's been since 1983. This is a technique that people the world over have loved for attaching lace to the bottom of anything, doll dress or anything else. I leave about, oh, a quarter to an eighth of an inch of fabric exposed. In other words, put the lace over there, not all the way over to the edge. Then I'm going to zigzag and my uh, width, my length is a one, my width is four and a half. But I have to, it's a really wide zigzag. It goes all the way off the fabric edge into the lace and it rolls that fabric edge and makes a nice, tight, secure edge. Now if I just put this lace over to the very edge and zigzagged it like this, there's a reason not to do it. It will come apart and that is not the idea when you're putting lace on the bottom of anything. Okay, now then, I have rolled it in, opened it up, it makes a beautiful finish, just a perfectly beautiful finish, like that. Now, if I really want to do something that I'm going to be sure that this is going to really lay down, that my lace is not going to flip back up, I will go back once again and just tiny. I'm going to take my zigzag width down to, uh, oh, I think about two and a half now. I'm going to tiny zigzag right on the top of that seam and that will hold, let me just I'm zigzagging right on the top of it, and that will hold that lace down. And you don't have to do that stitch if you don't want to, but that just gives you a little bit of added security. And now I have a really fun craft for you. This would make the most adorable gift for a newborn. This little bear is, the bear was purchased at the craft store, has little ribbons on its hair, lace over its sleeves, wonderful lace and trims. This is where you use up all those little scraps you don't know what to do with, ribbons and bows, and a little handkerchief for a skirt, and the cutest little basket filled with flowers. Now I'm going to slip this little bear around so you can see that the back of the bear's dress is just as cute as the front with all the little scraps and pieces. And I have a little secret. This is glued. This little bear does not have a, a sewn dress. It has a glued dress. Okay, let's look at the little bear. Let me turn this bear over so you can see that the bear from the craft store has a cloth, a muslin body. Now first of all you do the handkerchief and then you can stick pins in there until you get it glued. This little bear won't mind. And you just begin to put all the pieces. Let me turn it back over. Pieces of lace, pieces of Swiss insertion, little motifs, more pieces of lace, little pieces of lace over the shoulder. And I think these shoes are really cute. You just get a little piece of crochet kind of like that, turn it right side out, and you can stitch this or serge it, make a little shoe to fit, and then I'm going to slip that little shoe up on this bear's foot and go in here and tie it. Now as you can see, there are all kinds of trims. 
just everything in the world you might have a tiny little scrap of or maybe a torn up piece of. Can you see that little piece of lace will just be wonderful size for this bear, tr bear dress. And the little bows and the ribbons and then a little pearl for the necklace and then fill that little basket with flowers and you have an adorable present for a newborn or maybe for his or her mommy too. And now I have the cutest home decorating items for you. I have two really easy and beautiful projects for you. The first is a baby powder can cover. It is made of Swiss batiste and Swiss edging, ties at the top and the bottom, and has this neat little gizmo on the bottom here, ribbons that go across, so when you pick it up, the whole baby powder can won't fall on the floor. It's made of two pieces of Swiss batiste, little hems folded under on both sides, put down together, then the trim in this particular one is wide Swiss edging. Don't have to finish the edges on that. I'll show you why, kind of butted up to the middle, maybe not quite butted up. Then take some beading and just stitch it down on both sides, run your ribbons through it and your project is finished. Now this adorable little heart pillow is so precious and easy to make. You can see it uses a little handkerchief with little beads stitched down, little beads stitched down each one of those little flowers and has a little edge, a little lace edge around the edge and a little ribbon to hold it. Start with a, uh, this is a file fabric, a heart. Then the, for the top, you're going to lay your handkerchief up in here, embellish it, put it wherever you want to, stitch your ribbon down at the top, go ahead and do your bead work. Then you will finish it up by putting the heart on the top, sew all the way around it, turn it, and stuff it. After Wait, don't stuff it yet. Turn it. And after it's turned, then you're going to butt this lace edging up to the very edge and zigzag it on, and then stuff the little heart and, and um, stitch up the turning place and you have a really sweet little project which would be the nicest baby gift. And now won't you come along with me to my attic. I have a very sweet baby day gown for you today. The baby day gown has three little tabs in the front, one, two, three, with little tucks in between, sets of two tucks. The baby tab is made up of a Swiss embroidery with entredeau on both sides, and the seam allowance has been left on the Swiss embroidery and has gathered lace all the way around the tabs. Now, I'll turn it back to the back and show you the same sweet three tabs are on the back, just exactly like the front, and let me pull this one back. Behind this tab are little buttons and loops to close the dress. For my Sewing from the Heart today, I have a letter from Lynn Holmesa of Shreveport, Louisiana. Dear Martha, my volunteer sewing project was a quilt project I developed and chaired for my children's school. Eleven quilts were made, one for each grade, and live auctioned off at an annual spring fundraiser party. Each child and teacher made a square, and the quilts were constructed by a committee of mothers. The preschool squares were made from fabric bought by, brought by each child that was something familiar to them. The K-5 through 3rd grade uh, were drawings with fabric crayons and markers. 4th grade was made from dad's old ties. 5th grade squares were self-portraits. 6th grade decorated a t-shirt on denim. 7th grade made patriotic squares from a kit of fabric and trims. Eighth grade wore their favorite memory and the quilt was sashed in uniform fabric. The project involved many mothers, whether they could sew or not, and generated a great deal of interest and excitement from the students and the parents. The raffle made over $6,300 for the Parents Club for the school. Well, Lynn, I'll tell you, I just couldn't resist. I have to share some of these pictures of these quilts with our viewers. This one was made by the second grade, uh, had all those wonderful faces, almost looked like sunshine. These are the fifth grade self-portraits. See, each one of the children made a square which showed a portrait of themselves. Aren't they precious? Then these are the t-shirts on denim squares. Looks like they've decorated each one of those t-shirts and made something absolutely wonderful. And I bet those fifth graders like those t-shirts. Then let me turn 
uh, this one is the K through four. This is one of the younger uh, children's squares, and I believe this would have been squares of something familiar to them. There's a little rabbit and a fish, and it looks like a Noah's Ark, and, and just several other darling animals. I think there's a whale up there. Absolutely precious. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I hope you can join us next time.